Guys, exciting news. We're launching a new company, Mem, and it's now live. What is Mem? Stay tuned to find out. In this video, I'm gonna be answering your questions about Mem. If you wanna see how Mem actually works, check out this video on the Medical Insiders channel as well. What's going on, guys? Now on Instagram, I asked you for questions about Mem and I'm gonna be answering those questions here. So first, what is MEM? MEM is a new MCAT study tool that me, Richard, and Lewis have been working on for quite some time, and now it is officially live. It is the best, most effective way to memorize content for the science sections of the MCAT. So that's bio, biochem, psych, soch, chem, phys. It does not include anything from cars because cars is not about memorizing any information. It's about reading a passage and answering questions about that passage. Kind of related to this, who is MEM for and how does MEM integrate with other MCAT study tools? MEM is for anyone who is studying for the MCAT and who wants to learn and memorize the science-based information. First, we have a flexible scheduling system. So you can use either your own schedule and then use MEM in conjunction with that, or you can use one of the schedules we create for you with MEM and then use your, your own study materials in conjunction with that schedule. The other way is MEM is comprised of cards and sheets. So sheets are these like review sheets that contain all of the information you need to know about a certain topic. And then the cards are essentially flashcards. Now on both, we include a link to other resources for further explanation. Let's say you're learning about binocular visual cues and you wanna learn more about it more in depth. We'll actually link to, let's say, a Khan Academy video or some other resource where you can watch it more in depth. How long did it take for your idea to turn into reality? How did you and Richard meet? And why did you choose one another to found MEM? So first of all, Richard and I, we've known each other since middle school. We went to the same middle school, same high school. He went to the East Coast for college and medical school. I stayed in SoCal for college and medical school. And then we got together in residency. We were both in SoCal and we got together over lunch. And that's kind of what started this whole new chapter. We initially had a different project we were working on that was not MEM, and that got us working together on something medical education related. After a year of working on that, we had to drop it for a variety of reasons, and we went back to the drawing board, completely from scratch, saying, okay, we're no longer gonna work on USMLE, step one. Let's work on something else. Let's work on the MCAT and let's do some brainstorming here. So that was a little over two years ago when, that we started working on what essentially became MEM. And last year in the fall, we actually had Lewis join the team as the tech lead. So there's three of us and Richard and I are more of like the business vision, the ideation, the content, the marketing, stuff like that. But Lewis is the coder, the guy who's building everything, the website, the backend, all that stuff, which is super, super important. So the three of us together, we each have complementary skills that are providing value. I don't want you guys to think that this is like me or only me. It's definitely not. It was a team effort and we're all very proud of what we created. It is, it's gonna be something special. Why the name Mem? When you're naming a company, there's essentially two strategies. Either you do something that is descriptive that helps with SEO and just people recognizing what you're about. For example, Med School Insiders, pretty obvious that's about med school. On the other hand, you can choose something more generic like Apple or Takeya or a variety of other brands. So we obviously took the latter with MEM. And part of the reason is that we want to expand beyond just the MCAT in the future. So if we named it something just MCAT related, that obviously wouldn't be fitting. And the other reason is, you know, after our brainstorming session, we wanted something kind of related to its function. And MEM, obviously a play on memory, kind of highlights the feature, which is that this is a focused tool on comprehension and memorization of large quantities of information. What timelines are you thinking in terms of test taking with this study aid? Generally speaking, you should spend between two and six months to study for the MCAT. Using MEM, you can expect to spend between two and six months. It kind of depends on what other commitments you have. So MEM helps accelerate the learning process but in terms of the general timeline, you still need to learn a lot of information for the MCAT. You still need to do a lot of practice questions, et cetera. It's important to note here that MEM is designed to work in conjunction with other resources. So MEM is for the memorization of all the content. So you no longer need to use something like Anki or flashcards. We have, we have MEM for that, but you still need to do practice questions and practice tests, UWorld, AAMC, things like that. You also still need content review. So some people look to Khan Academy videos 
or to MCAT test prep books. We're also creating a Med School Insiders MCAT course, which will also serve this function and work very synergistically with MEM. Is it like Anki on steroids? Kind of. I mean, we took a lot of inspiration. You know, Richard and I have used Anki for years through all of our med school careers and, and also in residency. And Anki has a lot of issues, so we definitely addressed those issues with MEM, but we also added a lot of new functionality that isn't included in, in Anki. Which leads us to the next part, why is it better than existing study prep? Is it supposed to be a primary or supplementary study aid? What differentiates MEM from other MCAT prep that you talk about in your videos? And how is MEM different from MCAT Anki Dex? So what's unique about MEM is that it combines a lot of evidence-based study principles, spaced repetition, active recall, and relieving desirable difficulties, combines it into one easy to use tool. And we saw a lot of issues with Anki. For example, the learning curve, we've addressed that. The, the issue that a lot of people don't create good flashcards, We've addressed that. We've already created the cards for you. The issue of isolating context and understanding from memorization. A lot of people, when they use Anki, they just memorize these facts in isolation and they don't have the bigger picture of where it all fits in. So we've created these review sheets that are interactive and they contain all the information very well organized and structured so you can see how things relate and what all the content is. And then on the actual flashcards, when you flip it around to the back, we include an excerpt from that sheet that highlights the, the fact that you're being tested on and also includes related facts. So let's go back to binocular visual cues. If the card is testing you on a binocular visual cue, in the bottom, you'll have the excerpt from the sheet about binocular visual cues, but also an excerpt about monocular visual cues because that's related. It's something that students would often confuse. Primary or supplementary? I mean, I, I don't really think there are primary and secondary study aids with the MCAT. You just need to make sure you address content, memorization, practice questions, practice tests. Now, how is MEM different from MCAT Anki Dex? So other than the design of MEM, which is already different than Anki, the reason the actual content of the cards is different is with Anki Dex, they're not regularly updated, right? So you kind of get them as they are. They're not all comprehensive. You know, the people who created these decks are other pre-meds who are studying for the MCAT, not people like me and Richard, who you know, already got 99.9% .9 on the MCAT, but also studied and obsessed over what is and what is not included on the MCAT. What do you need to know and what can you leave out? What's a waste of time? So our cards, we also follow flashcard best practices. This is very important to actually memorizing and learning the content you wanna learn. Otherwise, if you look at these pre-made decks, a lot of them reinforce pattern recognition where you don't actually learn the content you just kind of recognize the card and you're reinforcing a pattern recognition rather than actually understanding the material. And the other thing is that the MEM content is constantly being updated. It's a web app, we have feedback. So if there are ever any errors or if people want us to elaborate on something, we have a system for that where we can regularly update and improve the content over time, which is also lacking from something like a pre-made Anki deck. How much will it cost? For one month, it's $129. For three months, it's 249, and for six months, it's 399. You also get 20% off if you use the coupon code MSI2020. And if you're not sure, you can actually try it. Seven day trial, no credit card required. And once you do purchase a plan, you have seven days to request a full 100% refund. Next question, what is the first thing you did when you decided to start MEM? Now, contrary to popular belief, Starting a company like MEM is not about having this great idea and then just executing it for six or 12 or 24 months and then having this great, amazing thing at the end. It's about a process. Now, part of that process was creating an MVP, a minimal viable product, and then having users test it and then adding to that and refining it and improving its functionality. And you do that over months. We started doing this in November or December of last year. And this is actually one message we got from one of the beta testers. So in the first email, she says, you know, hey, I've been using your service as one of my main content review sources. I wanted to ask if I go ahead and buy a membership, would I be able to access my cards today or tomorrow? She was finding value. She wanted to use it immediately. And then we said, yeah, for sure. Here's a coupon code. Thanks for you know helping us and providing your feedback. And she said, hey, thanks for accommodating me. And I was able to get into my account. I didn't find a place to put the referral code. So she actually paid the full price because she was finding so much value. And you know, nonetheless, your service has been a lifesaver and brought my practice test scores up immensely, et cetera, et cetera. So 
real people have been testing this and real people have been finding value. This is key when you're starting a new business like Mem. So we follow the lean startup methodology and similar concepts. And I'm gonna leave links to all those books down in the description if you're interested in yourself. And what this comes down to is a lot of iterating and testing and improving and doing that over several months. So one thing we did is we provided beta access. We said, hey, we'll give you free access to the early version of MEM. And in return, we just want your feedback. We're gonna ask you some questions, maybe do some interviews with you, etc. And at the end of that, you ask a survey. And in the survey, one of the questions is, the beta program is coming to an end. And you ask them, if you can no longer use MEM, how would you feel? And you want at least 40% of them to say, I would be very disappointed that I could no longer use MEM. And I'm very happy to say we had over 40%. And the reason this is important is it demonstrates that you have product market fit. People love using your product. They don't want to stop using it. And therefore, when you release it to the public, it should have favorable results. Now, the Lean Startup methodology and associated philosophies, we used it here in MEM, but you'll note that I didn't use this for Blue Link or Med School Insiders. The reason is MEM is innovative. It's a new tool. So in Blue Link, it's a biomedical incubator at UC San Diego. And I decided to model it after Stanford's biodesign based on my research of biomedical incubators and the different types of models and what would be best in that situation. Med School Insiders, the innovative part of Med School Insiders isn't the product we're offering, right? We're, we're offering services that are, you know, have been around for a while, admissions consulting, tutoring, things like that. The innovative part is on the back end with us. It's what the customer doesn't see. It's how can we reliably and reproducibly provide top tier service, make our customers really happy, make them love us, and then recommend us to other people. So that's a different process too. Here, we're creating something entirely new from scratch. So that's why we did the Lean Startup methodology instead. I mean, I could talk for ages about this whole process. At the beginning, you have to do things that don't scale. So you're having one-on-one -on -one customer interviews, you're doing surveys, you're doing like all these things that take a lot of time, but they are critical because you're getting valuable feedback from people who are your target demographic, your end users. Anyways, if you guys are interested in more of the, like the business process, the story of starting Mem, like the, the pivots, all that stuff, let me know. I'm not sure if you guys care about that or if you wanna hear just more about how to do well on the MCAT. But again, if you're interested, check out mem.io. Use MSI 2020 for 20% 20 off your subscription. If you wanna see how mem actually works, check out this MSI video. And thanks for watching guys. Much love and I'll see you all in that next one.